here's the driver's side. This one gave me a lot more hope because it just, it went in really smoothly, to be honest. The passenger side was the fight. Now, one thing they mentioned in your directions is these big half inch washers. And having them, well, let's just say a second ago, I could move that, but either way, you, uh, they basically have you not tighten those too much because the nut, if you look at the bottom of the nut, it's got a flange on the bottom with a bunch of serrated teeth. That will stop that from backing out. So, you don't actually run these that tight. You basically put these washers on and tighten until you can just barely move the washer, tighten a little more, if it stops moving, back it off a quarter turn and there's your sweet spot, according to Brown Dog Off-Road. Now, so far their directions have been pretty darn specific and they seem to be quite good. So, I figured I'd try it their way. Now these ones, of course, I ordered, as you might be able to read on there, the Ultraflex rubbers. What a dog that's sensitive to vibration and he gets scared if anything makes buzzing sounds. So, you know, I try to help him out as I can and not put polyurethane in. These, these are probably gonna be pretty stiff bushings as they are, cross our fingers, it doesn't vibrate too much. Um, I didn't replace the transmission uh, I didn't, I didn't replace the rubber mount there. It was, it looked to be in reasonably good shape and no one had them available in town fast enough for me to get it on. So we'll try it. If it has bad vibes, that's gonna be one of the first place I, places I go looking. Beyond that, I'll use their technique with the washers and moving them and uh, see if I can tune it out. I expect there's gonna be a little bit more, but the big thing is I have, Doing doing motor mounts on these is never the easiest thing because you've got this big long heavy motor with a big long transmission and a transfer case on the back of that, two drive shafts to mess with, the exhaust putting strain on itself. It's it's a lot going on in there to get the things lined up, and you're meanwhile trying to not crush your oil pan. So this time I used a large, ah, it's probably a two by six and spread that over as much of the uh, oil pan as I could so it spread it out rather than having single point or tiny little contact points like the shoe on the jack. So it gives you more hope you're not gonna cave in your oil pan. As always, you should check and make sure that it's in good shape afterwards. The last thing you wanna do is accidentally cave that sucker in and then <laughs> wonder why the engine makes awful sounds and it started to suffer uh, oil because you messed up your oil pump. Now, I'm going to want to try running it. Good thing to remember, I left this overnight. Today's a new day. It's easy to forget things. I made sure anything I unplugged, I plugged back in. And uh, make sure you take your paper towel or rag out of there. Maybe even put the air box in place and put it on there. Or make sure it's at least clear around there so it doesn't suck anything in. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna try starting it. Well, I'm gonna call myself pleased with this. I mean, there is pretty much no movement in those, no rocking side to side. When I started it up, to be honest, the Jeep looked like a diesel coming to life. It twisted the whole chassis on the suspension. So that's kind of cool. I mean, Cherokees are already pretty torquey and tend to flatten out the passenger side leaf a bit faster because of that, the torque of this big beast of an inline six. So now it's gonna put that a little more directly to the ground with a little bit less in the way. I'll have to take it for a test drive. See if those little yellow guys, well, that one's a little, got a bit in the way, but see if uh, those mounts cause any vibrations or make any sort of noticeable difference. Of course, they don't gain you horsepower. That's a complete fallacy. You don't create horsepower by having stiff mounts. But initial takeoff, yeah, you could have a little bit. But it does also reduce some shock loading. That's why I went rubber over poly. All right, now's the time to ask yourself, did I leave a rag in the intake? Hopefully the answer to that question is no. Get that seated back down. Well, maybe a little preemptively, because 
I gotta get this lid off again. So here you go, don't take that off. Right away. Now's the time to align your nuts. Okay, we're gonna start it. I might shake the camera because it's mounted to the fender, but let's see what it does. Well, I can tell you it torques the body a fair bit, but it doesn't seem to move under the hood. All right, I think those will do just fine. Now a little pepper here has had quite the tune-up. Now we gotta go out and have some fun.